I'm going to do a review of this uh, mini excavator that I purchased off of eBay. It's a Typhon product and it's got a 25 horsepower Perkins diesel engine in it. I picked it up about a month and a half ago and have done quite a bit of digging and excavation with it. Uh, it is advertised as a 2.5 ton on eBay. I think it was Asian machine. Uh, it cost me right at $17,000 with, uh, with tax. Um, so I've never owned an excavator before. The other uh, pieces of equipment I've owned were a Teramite backhoe, a T5C. Um, that's where I really cut my teeth on excavating was with that little backhoe. The reason we purchased this and, and are in the process of uh, getting rid of the backhoe, selling it, is because the backhoe's got... I need, I need to do more work and less working on equipment. It's still a good machine. Uh, the Teramite, I've got to fix a power steering issue and then I'm, I plan to sell it. But uh, overall, I wanted to give a review on this. Uh, the initial owner's manual that I received with this was uh, basically in uh, in English a very poor rendition of how not to kill yourself on an excavator. Uh, so right out of the gate I did have a problem within uh, the first 10 hours. Um, the, the alternator went... Uh, south on me. I was really concerned about that because I, I bought this knowing uh, it was a risk, meaning that the risk was uh, n no implied warranty. But I contacted the seller and they absolutely made it right. They were going to ship a new alternator, but that would have taken some time to come from China. I opted to go ahead and buy an alternator um, uh, off of uh, Amazon to replace it and they credited me that amount. Um, anyway, real straightforward access on this to some of the maintenance was a little, you got to remove a lot of things. I'm not sure if I'm going to change that. Uh, it does have about a three gallon diesel tank on it, which is plenty for the job. It's only one speed of direction and uh, and that's that's that the the tracks are not a screw adjustment you do need to use it's more like a regular like the larger um what am i what's the word the larger excavators you use a, a a grease gun to put grease in to extend them and you release it with a valve right down there i have had to put the tracks back on because i'm not trained in driving with tracks one of the things i did notice it's a little it's a little bouncy, uh, meaning I don't think it had enough counterweight. So I manufactured and fabricated this up, and I, I did put a hole there for exhaust so it wasn't blown right on that. And this is just a piece of square, uh, I want to say that's four and a half inch, maybe five inch tube. And then uh, I don't know if you can see my, my family brand there. That's uh, Thompson Cattle Company, my great grandfather's uh, brand, and I proceeded to pour lead in there. That counterweight right now added 500 pounds to the back end. Uh, the the piece I estimated weighed about 30 pounds, and then I put 470 pounds. I do intend to add more weight. I need to drill some ports here. It didn't pour all the way in. Uh, I'm going to drill a port here and a port here to add more counterweight. That improved its balance drastically, so I anticipate I'll even be able to get uh, better. The tracks on this do extend from the width. I have it all the way out, and they will uh, get narrower. They will come in and go out, come in and go out. And then, of course, the blade, the pusher blade, uh, it, it also, you can remove the pins and flip those around for tighter access. I don't anticipate that I will ever use it in that configuration. Um, so the interesting thing is, is on this bucket here, the, the, uh, this particular is roughly five inches and these are inch and an eighth or 30 millimeter. Uh, I haven't found a whole lot of 
pieces for that. I did go ahead and purchase these, this Quick Connect. I'm in the process of installing that now. One of the things that I did do right out of the gate, it came with the uh, the needle style grease fittings in in several places. I I have replaced those with regular Western style uh, grease zerks in there, and um, some of them just didn't make sense. Like this this ram here, uh, this was flipped around on on the underside as uh, here, and I. I took that off when I replaced the grease fitting and flipped it around and put the grease fitting in there so it'd be a little more protected. Uh, this pin here, it does not have a uh, it does not have any grease going through it. Uh, in the process of putting this in, I'm going to put a pin in that I can grease to get grease into there too as well. Um, so far, no leaks. One of the things that I did do. Yeah, I went through it right after I got it as much as I could that with the limited knowledge that I had and made sure everything was tight. Uh, I've had no blowouts on the hydraulics. I've had nothing. I, ha I have seen already though, I don't know, hopefully this will focus in. I've got some micro abrasions here on this uh, hydraulic line. Um, I, I think there's a better way to do this, but given that this arm does move a little bit. I, I'm not sure what I'll do there yet. The nice thing is it is plumbed for another function valve. You just have to change this, move this over, and uh, it absolutely will uh, will give you more capability on on the outside here. Um, so I do. I did get this. I am going to build a uh, a um, landscaping bucket a wider one for with no teeth and then a narrower bucket and I'm going to build a, a ripping tooth all the ripping teeth that I see they they're outrageous for this size and I'm just like I'm not spending it's been $1,500 when I can make something but I'm gonna go ahead and get this swapped out I need both hands we'll see how this works I anticipate I'm gonna get a little digging depth but I'm also gonna sacrifice some breakout uh, the soil that I'm digging in here in uh, in Idaho it's quite rocky most of it's like this river rock type stuff and it's it's really stacked in there uh, uh, tetra style with sand and other things uh, with a little bit of uh, what we like to call hardened Idaho moon dust so this is one that I'm going to flip around to while I'm here I'm going to take this out and uh, turn the turn this grease fitting so it's on the inside here to give it a little more protection from the outside anyway I'm gonna get this work done and I'll show you what a how it all comes out and then uh, we've got a little bit of digging to do today I need to bury some concrete uh, that I don't want to haul off so I'll put the camera down get some work done and come back
So the way this uh, this works, um, you use that the ratchet that came with it, and you turn this bolt, which in turn moves this piece in and out, and then you have this lock, this little variable hex lock that you put on there so it's square in the I guess you need to find a spot with the ratchet that you're looks like I'm gonna have to go the other direction because that's supposed to fit down in that little keeper spot Keeper pin goes in. I think it's an overcomplicated system, but hey, if it works, I'm good with it. So that's how that goes. All right, I am going to climb on the excavator and let's go see if we can dig a hole. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this pin is for. I have not figured that out yet. Maybe it's a lock. Maybe I better do something about it. Let me take a look. Sorry about that. Dropped you guys in the dirt. Uh, got those greased up. I'm going to go put this in the charger and then... Uh... So a recap of the uh, review of this uh, mini excavator. It's a Typhon uh, Terror X2. An interesting name of... Uh, of this uh, mini excavator that I purchased off of eBay. Uh, I did want to re recap, I did mention earlier in the video that the um, owner's manual that it came with was was very poor and uh, basically not how to how to not kill yourself in uh, in poorly translated into English. Uh, since that time I have gotten uh, received, I have received a a new version of the owner's manual and it is much more extensive and much better so i did uh, as you saw i did install that uh, quick connect it functions real well um, and so i'll be able to make changes out on the implements so i'll just quickly go over a few other things on this uh, on this machine to uh, make you aware if you're contemplating buying one <coughs> uh, let me get over here so on on this here this is uh, very much like anything else this this uh, uh, portion here and I'm gonna come in here and show you this lever here um, when that locks down, that engages the hydraulics of, of the unit to disengage for safety purposes. You lift that up and it, uh, it disengages. That way, if you're going to climb on and off the machine with it running, uh, you're in a much safer uh, position to do so. And, uh, and it works real well. The controls are pretty straightforward. Uh, I think I went over some of those on on this machine and uh, it, it was a little bit of uh, some learning for me they weren't exactly uh, and I don't know a lot about uh, excavators per se my understanding is there's two different uh, standards for which the controls are configured I'm not sure which this was but it was not hard anyone who operates equipment probably can learn that fairly quickly without without issue um, overall the uh, the thumb works real well I, I do think there's a couple places that I'm going to reinforce it 
I will probably put a another uh, a little bit stronger piece between these two to help it stabilize a little bit so I think these could end up uh, getting deformed or bent in in the process the, the teeth there and then as I mentioned before I do have plans for um, a a wider landscaping bucket so I can smooth the dirt with it'll be a probably about 30 inches wide with uh, no teeth on it and then also a narrower bucket so I can trench without removing so much dirt. Uh, this quick connect, um, it did have this hook on here and I appreciate that. I'm hoping that's cast steel and not cast iron. Uh, we'll see if it's uh, cast steel, uh, that would be good because then if that comes off, I can weld something to it so it doesn't, uh, I, I can't imagine that it would be anything less than cast steel but we'll see uh, the tracks are uh, sufficiently wide in my opinion I think they they do quite well um, and on the on the back I did manufacture this and I think I mentioned that earlier one thing that was not glaringly obvious is uh, in the operation this uh, control arm here it uh, raises and lowers the the uh, bulldozer blade or cutting blade but there's also a button that's on the inside here that when you push that button down that's what will move your tracks open and closed to move the tracks open and closed you definitely want to uh, lift the entire thing off the ground with the, the bulldozer blade and then the uh, the boom arm as well so uh, real quick hopefully you can see this this is basically all your input here uh, as far as uh, what's going on with the runtime uh, temperature and uh, and uh, fuel level um, the uh, key uh, is there's a heat position that you turn that way to operate the glow plugs in a colder environment. This is the throttle. There's this toggle switch here and that toggle switch uh, basically switches from turning the entire the entire unit, uh, the entire top half uh, to swinging the uh, boom arm uh, this way right or left. Uh, I think it lacks a little bit in the lighting department. There's a single light on the boom. I do intend and already have purchased a uh, another piece of uh, LED light that I'm going to put up here for that. Uh, one of the things for me, it's a little tight. I'm I'm a pretty tall guy, uh, six foot uh, three and a half. I used to be six four, but life has beat me down. So what I did do, and I've done this on multiple things, is I added a riser to the seat to get my legs a little bit further away from there. And there's plenty of headroom there. The seat's a little small for me, but it's comfortable enough to do, to work in. The battery is behind this here panel. Uh, all the panels have to be removed uh, with the nuts and bolts except for the, the rear hood opening. Um, in here, pretty straightforward. Your electrical fuses are there. They've done a nice job of, of heat wrap around the uh, the muffler slash yeah I'm pretty sure that's a muffler hopefully it's not a diesel particulate filter but we'll find out about that and and you've got a water fuel separator and also a uh, a uh, fuel filter right there uh, pretty impressed for the uh, the power and the fuel efficiency um, for a three gallon tank. Uh, I can operate for right about six hours. I, I don't need to be at high idle. Um, one downside to this, it is, does not have a two-speed transmission for the track. So anywhere you're going, you're going at a snail's pace. Uh, given that it's 
rated at uh, uh, 2.5, 2.7 ton. I've seen documentation on both. Uh, so the unit weighs, you know, right at about um, uh, 5,500 pounds or so. At, and then I've added 500 pounds of, of lead and steel on the back. So I'm, I'm calling it a three ton. So 6,000 pounds. So you want a trailer that can carry 6,000 pounds in, in doing that. One of the things that I did like about this is in a lot of the places across here, there are hard lines and then shorter um, hydraulic lines that are flexible uh, to deal with. And, and in the critical places, they are uh, abrasion resistant lines. Uh, this, these particular ones here, try and zoom in on this. These already have some cracks in it. It's not from abrasion. It's probably just been overstressed. Um, and I'm not sure what the solution is for that to see uh, where that, that is. One of the things I have noticed, and I'm assuming this is common with, with uh, some hydraulics, and I'm not sure where the leak is taking place, but some rams in, in in a lot of different hydraulics uh, just slowly over time either they push back but the thumb tends to it will slowly over time start to go and that it it's probably in that ram that it's probably just slipping got some uh, some blow by plenty of strength there though and it, it does a really good job uh, plenty of grease fittings uh, probably more than I could I could count but overall as I, as I would say, if I was going to rate the unit on, on what the uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, I would definitely say that this probably for the home guy that can do some mechanical work and take care of things themselves, uh, I would give this uh, a, a solid uh, uh, B for that. If I was in the business of making money with the excavator, um, only if I had multiples would I would I go this route. Granted, it's half the price, if not less than half the price of, uh, of the uh, brand name counterparts, but uh, overall uh, real impressed. It's not a it's not a tiny, if I was grading it up against a a Kubota or Bobcat, which is units that I've, I've not owned or driven, I would probably say because of the lack of support, as in I cannot drop it off at the dealer to have things fixed, I would uh, definitely probably give this uh, about a C plus. But overall, I'm I'm very pleased with it. It uh, it's responsive. The controls are are fairly smooth. Uh, and, and it's it's a good product so far. I hopefully I will get um, a long life out of it. I know that I will do my part to uh, change the fluids when needed and also uh, uh, lubricate everything where it's at. So if you're interested in one of these and want to ask any questions of me, feel free to post those in the comments or uh, or get a hold of me in some other fashion. Um, Overall, though, I, I think it's a pretty good product, and I'm, I'm happy with it for what I have to do.